Hello YouTubers and welcome back to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel and the second part of the G Drive custom card back template pro uh, series. So the first video showed you how to access the G Drive via the link that was in the comments. I even put it in a figured out how to put it in the um, on the screen, though the like link is so long that it, it's prohibitive to use it that way, but it's in the comments and it is also on my Facebook page, my customizing Facebook page. So once you have access to that G drive, then you can see the four folders that are in there, Star Wars, GI Joe, random, and then the um, useful bits folder. So we're, I'm going to show you how to actually use that template. And for this video, I'm going to do the front of a GI Joe card. So let's start off, you know, probably not a bad idea real quick, just to show you how to get back into the G drive, how to download it. And we'll go from there. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Okay, using that link, you should come to a page similar to this with the four different folders in it. And it's four for now. If this pro, uh, project progresses and I need more, I'll make more folders in here. And of course, there'll be an accompanying video with that. But right now we're gonna do the uh, GI Joe template. We're gonna do the front. So I'm gonna open that. And we're going to select the 1985 one. No particular reason. Double click on it. Gives you the drop down menu. And we want download. Click on that. And uh, it will, depending on your computer, it'll bring up a dialog box on whether you want to open it straight into Photoshop or you want to uh, save it to the drive. Uh, it's up to you, doesn't really matter. I prefer to save it to the drive. I'm gonna cancel out of this because in the last video I've already downloaded it to the drive, but let's pretend that you say okay. So hide the drive and then in your downloads, you'll see the file. I'm gonna double click on that again and I'm gonna open with Photoshop. I'm gonna cancel out of it again, cancel out of that again because in the last video I showed you how to open it. And there it is. So now that it's open, I had mentioned layers. So each individual part is a layer here. So I'm going to hit the letter V, which will move stuff. And then I'm gonna select, let's select like the Cobra logo. If you look in the layers, that's what it selected here. Uh, sorry, that pop up there saying the first video is done exporting and it's ready to upload to YouTube. Sorry, I'm kind of doing like three things at once here. So I selected the Cobra logo and in here, it, in the layers, it shows the Cobra logo. Now let's say you're doing a GI Joe character and you don't want to use the Cobra logo. See this little eyeball next to it? Click on the eyeball. and it will hide that layer. See how the cover logo is gone? It's still in there, but now it's a hidden layer. So what we want to do is add uh, the character art here, right? So let's do that real quick. So here's a picture of low light that I've got. Uh, we're going to put him on the card. So I'm gonna open that, I've saved it to my desktop. We're gonna open that with Photoshop. So now we have the card open and just thinking about it. And now we have the low light added. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do real quick is just resize it. Image, resize image. Resolution, I always change that to 300. That's 300 DPI. Makes it uh, better for printing. Save that. It's going to think about it because it's a big picture. Now it's huge. 
So command or control zero, we'll bring it back down to size. I'm going to command or control minus to make it smaller again. Now I want to put this on the card. So what I'm gonna do is push V, which will move it, push in the mouse button and start to move it up. Then it's gonna give me this thing that says I can't move it because unless I convert it to a normal layer. Okay, click okay. Now you can move it. And I just drag and drop it in there. Oh wait, it's too big. It's too big, uh oh. So I'm going to command or control minus again. And then I'm going to shrink it to about the size that I think it needs to be. But now you see it's on top of this. All right, so my this is layer now layer two. So I'm gonna start dragging this down until the border is over it. Drag it, pop. No, nope, border's still not over that. Drag it again, boink. Oh, it didn't do anything. There, I dragged it down far enough so it is under the edge of the card now. Oh, but all of this is bleeding over, right? All right, so I'm gonna enlarge the picture so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to select erase, the, the eraser tool. And I'm only, only gonna do like, I'm gonna do a kind of half-ass job on this because it will take forever to, It's the, it wouldn't be a good video to watch to watch me like edit this. So I'm gonna make that eraser bigger and then I'm just going to start erasing the extraneous bits. And I'm just going to do a, a, a little outline around the character so that you can see. How it looks. So this is gonna be kind of like half assed. But you know, when you're doing it yourself, take your time and do it right. And it will look awesome. Trust me. Alright, still on top of that bubble on that blister. So I'm going to drag it down a little further, drag that layer down. That's probably, it probably needs to be below that layer. There. Okay, so I have dragged, that's all you gotta do is move stuff around in here. So I dragged the picture of low light far enough down so it's under the edge of the bubble or the, uh, the edge of the card and it's under the, the bubble that his stuff will be on. Since I am using a blister that does not have the top part, I don't actually want that there. So I'm going to select that layer, which is this layer, and then I'm gonna use that erase tool again. And I'm going to erase that top part where his backpack would go and his accessories. See how that, it, since I'm in just that layer, it just erased that specific part. It didn't touch the background, it didn't touch low light, and it didn't touch the text. Isn't that awesome? So it won't, you know, if you were going back in to clean up all this, you need to be in that layer, which is the next layer down. It's kind of hard to see my cursor from this far away. So, I selected the low light layer again. I, I want to clean up that just a little bit, just for the sake of the video, just to show you how to do it. All right, so I cleaned that up a bit. Um, to really get in there, you gotta get it real big, get the eraser real small, and then just do an outline around the figure. And then, you know, maybe you don't like how it's sitting. So V, Make sure you're selecting the right layer. V will move it. And I want to move him over just a little bit. There we go. I like that better. That's a happy little, little light there. All right. Now, how do we change this text? Okay. Well, the text is over here. Uh, let's see here. Specialty. So you look for the text 
will actually be written out in here. So specialty in two lines. So specialty in two lines. Select T, push T for text. Go over the lettering. Here, let me enlarge this here so we can see it better. All right. See, my, my cursor is right here. I'm going to double click on that and see it's highlighted. So I'm going to delete that. So I deleted the white, but it left the shadow. If you look over in the letter, over in the layers, there's a lettering outline. See the little eyeball next to it? Push that eyeball. The back of that is gone now. All right, so we're going back to text and I need to go back to the specialty. In two layers. Took me a second to like, ooh, because I haven't used this template for a long time. Okay. So I'm going back over it. I have selected T. Double click on it, delete, double click, delete, double click, delete. And I'm going to cap lock, oops, here, let's back out of night, spotter, because I believe that was his original. See how it's underneath there now? So text layer, I'm going to bring that up over low light. See how I just, just by moving the layer there, that's why they call them layers because they're stacked on top of each other. So it's like moving sheets of paper around. Okay, now I want to change his code name. So let me find, I should have put my glasses on to do this because now I got to get way down here. So I'm looking for the layer that has his code name. Code name goes here. All right, so I select that layer by clicking on it. I go back to T. I get over the letters. And I double click on it. And it selected goes. Scroll over a little bit. I'm gonna double click on it again. And instead of deleting that, I'm just gonna type his code name in here. Low light. I'm gonna give a space between trademark and his code name. Okay. And then zoom back out. Command or control zero will get it back to the original size. And there you go. That is how you change stuff on the card. That is how you use the template. You select the layer that you want and then you edit that particular that particular layer when you are done, when you are ready to print out. So this particular card, before we get to that, this particular card has a layer of where you can type in the accessories. So you find the layer that has the in the list that has where the accessories are. It's a text layer right here, select that layer, and then select text, and then you can list the accessories that are in your custom, that come with your custom figure. I think that is super cool. I think it's a fantastic little Easter egg, and I do that on all of my custom cards. If you hold one of my finished custom cards you, on the side, just like the vintage cards, it will say, it will list the accessories that that particular figure comes with. I think that is an awesome feature. Or if you didn't want to bother with that, remember the little eyeball there? Click on that little eyeball and it'll hide the layer. Okay, so we are done with this. Let's say this is how we want our card. Now what do we do? Okay, uh, in this little area here, click on it. It will bring up a drop down menu or a, a menu. You want to flatten image. Flatten image, smushes all the layers together. 
now we want to save this. So uh, up to file, click save as. Save as. Give it a sec, give it a sec. All right, so you can see this is the name of the file that we've opened. It's the 85 standard and it's a Photoshop document. So I've selected, I've highlighted all that. We're gonna change that to low light front. Okay, uh, I want to, I'm gonna save it in downloads just because we're going to look at them simultaneously. I, I wanna show you something in there. Normally I would save that to the desktop to export it, but I want to show you uh, a comparison. So we're going to save it. It's still a Photoshop document. We're going to save it as a JPEG. Now my particular printer, the print, I use a printing company. So when I take my files in, they want them to be, um, what do they want? They want them to be PDFs because that bakes in the color settings for their printers. Um, so you, if you're going to do this on your printer at home, not a big deal should be okay. But my particular, I, I have these professionally printed. They want them to switch them to want me to bring in PDFs. I have a program on the computer that switches the JPEG to PDF. It's not a big deal. It takes about 10 seconds. Oh, like I said, we're going to save this as a JPEG. Save it. Give it a sec. Uh, I always do the maximum resolution, the maximum file size. Okay. And let me do something real quick. There is your card. That's how you use the template. Nothing to it. All right, let me hide Photoshop for a second. And if you look here, you can see since I've renamed it, there is the, uh, hang on a sec here. Ooh, let's zoom in. Clever, hang on, let me readjust. Okay, that's getting crooked, sorry. Here's the original file. And the Photoshop, the low light. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to take out all the stuff that I don't, I don't need, I that I won't have on a card, or put in the stuff that I want. So like I will change the GI Joe logo to my own logo. I will change the Hasbro logo to my logo, and then I will save that as a template. That's another trick is like take out all of the stuff that you don't want on that card on your template and save it. A good example of it is the the back because I've yeah, because I've changed it doesn't say GI Joe anymore. It has my logo. The flag points has my logo. Uh, all of the fine printing is all Easter eggs. If you look at it, if you hold it up close, there's there's uh, like Easter eggs that says this was printed in Sovereign Hatchistan. Uh, it's a shout out to my buddy JD who suggested that I use that. Um, but all, all the fine printing is, is Easter eggs. And you can do that with your card, especially on the back template. You can do it on any template. Um, that's the, the beauty of these templates is it's a template to start and do anything you want with it. And that's how you make, that's how you make a GI Joe card. It didn't take long, did it? And there you go. That's how you use that template to make whatever you want. Thing, let me mention that real quick. When you flatten the image, you should get a pop-up that says, do you want to hide? Or I don't remember what it says exactly. It says, are you sure you don't want the hidden layers shown in the final image? It gives you a pop-up similar to that. You, if you're hiding it, something, you know, like the Cobra logo on a GI Joe card, yeah, you don't want that Cobra logo. So you click yes, and there's actually a, a set, uh, like a checkbox in there to say, S remember this setting. Um, so that I was expecting that particular dialog box to pop up, but I forgot I have checked that particular box, so it doesn't even ask me anymore. So if you have a, lit, a specific layer hidden, it won't show up in the final product. But there you go. That's how you make a card in Photoshop. There's not that much to it.
the layers are fantastic the layers are awesome the layers are amazing that's why everything's in layers that's why all of these pictures on this g drive g drive and they're not pictures actually they're files that's why all of these are photoshop documents and not jpegs is because they're layered that allows you to manipulate all of that particular information so there you go that is how you use the template in photoshop it seems pretty quick because i've been using it for a great number of years a mini number of years it does take a little practice and the nice thing about photoshop is there's an undo button at the top in the drop down menu of the edit menu so if you screw something up you can just go up to that hit undo and it will undo the last action that you did. I use that a lot. Anything you do, it's not permanent until you flatten that image. And as long as you don't close that image in Photoshop, if you leave it up, you can unflatten it and go back in and fix the layers. So I don't recommend closing, like shutting down Photoshop until you're 100% you're happy with that card. Once that card is just how you want it, and you know that's how you want it, you're positive you don't want to make any more changes, flatten that image, save it, then you can close it. Um, that's just kind of a recommendation because even after you have saved that as a JPEG and you said, oh shit, there's a typo, or damn, I wanted to put my logo on there, or there's some something that's bleeding over that I don't want, I can... I have Photoshop open, I can unflatten that image, all those layers are still there. I can go in and to the text, fix that typo. I can go into where it was bleeding over and fix it with the erase tool. Um, I can drop my logo in over the Hasbro logo because I forgot, anything like that. So don't close Photoshop until you're 100%, until you're ready to print it. I recommend printing from Photoshop, not from your desktop. Print from Photoshop. That way when you have the image that you want, that you, um, once you have that image that you want, once you have it in hand, once it's an actual piece of paper, then you know you're done, then close it out. The sheer number of cards that I make, because I make a bunch of cards at one time, I, sometimes I leave it open, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I regret closing Photoshop and I'm like, shit, now I gotta make that card over from scratch. So don't do that. That's kind of a pitfall. All right. So that was how to make the front of the G.I. Joe card. That's the end of this particular video. So do all that fun social media stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. If you have a question for troubleshooting, because this is, um, these templates are not perfect. However, if you run into problems that you cannot seem to find, figure out, comment below and the comment is complex enough it's like you know i did this and this is what's happened what is wrong i will do a follow-up video on how to troubleshoot that so like share subscribe comment below thanks for watching and i hope that this is the first step for you for carding your own customs thanks for watching